If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at utilizing Ruckus Smart Room to help us with clients that we deem to be sticky. Uh, Smart Room is going to monitor the uplink RSSI thresholds of these clients, and if a client drops below the threshold that we've defined, the AP will send a DAUTH to the client, forcing the client to rescan. Let's get started. So before we get started with the configuration, I did want to show you just kind of a brief overview of this environment. We are going to be enabling Smart Room for Ruckus uh, Smart Zone. Uh, it can be also enabled for Unleashed as well, but we're doing this from a Smart Zone perspective uh, in my lab environment. And I do have two APs here. I've got uh, AP1 and AP2. Um, the network that we're going to enable Smart Room for is the guest uh, open network and it is only being broadcast by AP2 um, and I'm particularly going to be doing it on the 5 gigahertz channel so as you can see this AP does not even have 2.4 enabled on it so we're going to connect our client up to team XX AP2 uh, and we're going to uh, set up the smart room there so looking over at the WLANs that I've got configured uh, under team zone under our corp uh, group we have guest open and corp uh, guest open is the one that we're going to configure this on just for ease of simplicity so let's go ahead and get started with the actual config okay so we are logged into the smart zone cli uh, smart roam can only be configured from the cli on smart zone and unleashed uh, so here we are we're logged into that right now ready to do the configuration uh, i do need to go into enable mode and enter the password for that and then get into configuration mode so as i mentioned previously we're going to configure smart roam for the guest open network uh, what we need to do first is actually get to the point where we can configure that so we need to go into the domain level which is demo domain one and then we need to go into the zone level which is team xx zone and then we need to get into the WLAN that we want to configure this for. So guest open is the network. Uh, now from here, simply all we have to do to turn on Roam, uh, Smart Roam, is enter Roam. And then we can then additionally choose a Roam factor. And the Roam factor, we did talk about the Roam factor in the... Uh, Ru Ruckus Wireless uh, Troubleshooting 300. If you need a reference back to that, uh, feel free to do that. But we're setting the roam factor, and as you will recall from that, uh, we need to specify which radio that we want to specify that roam factor for. Uh, so I'm actually going to just do 5 gigahertz. So I said uh, we were just doing it on Team XX AP, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, Team XX AP2, and that uh, WLAN is only being propagated off of that AP and only on 5 gigahertz. So I'm simply just setting it. Um, on the 5 gigahertz here, or defining it on 5 gigahertz. Um, it will have a roam factor uh, by default for 2G, uh, uh, so we can look at that once we look at the overall configuration. And I am setting our roam factor to 7, so this is outside of what they suggest or what is suggested in a um, in a in a uh, enterprise environment uh, but this is a lab environment and I do need to set this a little bit higher to get the process um, to work quickly for me um, typically you will want to start with more conservative values two or three monitor and then work up from there uh, so I'm going to go ahead and set the room factor to seven and then I'm going to exit the configuration and then we're going to go take a look at the uh, show running config for the domain zone and WLAN and we should be able to see here that smart room is enabled and our roam factor is set. So the default roam factor on 2.4 is one, and we had changed the roam factor uh, for five gigahertz to seven. So that's how we can verify the configuration of smart roam. Um, there are additional settings that can be applied. 
uh, at the AP level for additional things like Mac weight filters and, and things like that. Uh, I'm going to leave all that stuff default and now I want to kind of take a look at uh, how Smart Roam is actually operating. All right, now that uh, Smart Roam is enabled and configured for the guest open WLAN, uh, I'm going to connect a client to that. And you can see now that we've got one client. That is my specific phone. Uh, the next step for me is going to be uh, to just kind of take this mobile device and walk away from the access point so that you can see the Smart Roam disconnect uh, message that does show up on the AP uh, log. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and go ahead and do that. We'll take a look at the AP log when we get back. We'll also take a look at the uh, Wireshark capture so you can see the disassociation from that aspect as well. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the AP syslog, and I didn't have to walk very far away from that AP since I set that logging levels, or the uh, the RSSI roam factor so high. Um, I didn't have to get too far away for it, from it before it disassociated me. So I'm gonna look at get syslog log here. And we are going to take a look and see if we can't find our disconnect uh, from smart roam. So, I do see some disconnects up here uh, from our AP uh, to the client that we were 5473 is, is my client here. Just roll up a little bit and we can see, yes, indeed, we do have smart room disconnect listed here. So we have a smart room disconnect, a smart room kickoff event. Uh, targeted to our 5473 client. So um, what was happening is the client um, w the client uplink RSSI was being monitored, and once it hit the threshold, uh, it was sent a disassociation. Looking at Wireshark and filtering down, so uh, this was a capture I was running uh, between uh, from from an AP to that client. So I'm seeing everything that's happening between the AP and client. And we can see finally, uh, we do have a disassociate listed here. And if we go down into the disassociate uh, and take a look at what code it was sent, uh, reason code disassociated because uh, sending station is leaving or has left the BSS. So reason code eight. And if we uh, kind of go down back to our AP log that we ran, we should be able to see disassociation, uh, disassociation reason code eight here as well. So yeah, we can see um, that it was in fact uh, disassociated. Uh, reason code, uh, reason code eight is identified uh, and is even additionally identified here. So uh, Smart Roam is working as we have uh, asked it to. So again, we used a pretty aggressive Roam factor. Uh, when you're using this in your environment, you're going to want to start with maybe two uh, monitor, monitor what you've got going on, and then kind of work up from there if you're looking to implement this in your environment. That is all we had for this quick one. Uh, we do thank you for watching and hope you can join us for additional content in the future. Thank you.